You have nothing to fear with God on your side. Stick the flesh in the attic. Bury it. Burn it. But don't give it any play. Not now. Don't make a mess out of what could be a miracle. Don't do that. Don't sabotage the blessing God's bringing to you. Don't say, oh, I would if I could, but I can't, so I ain't. No. Your attitude will determine your altitude. How high do you want God to take you? You don't sit up there and act a fool every time life throws a, 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 a stumbling block in your way. Or are you going to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord? What are you going to do? God bless you. Be encouraged. All mics open. Okay, this is Mario giving feedback to our discussion. Go on. Something we have to realize, before we get saved, before the Lord opens our heart, we're all pawns of Satan. We're part of this world and everything. When God snatches us out of that and opens our eyes and opens our hearts and everything, and we become saved and we're part, we're his, okay? And he says this world is not our home. So then, then, so basically we become strangers in a foreign land, okay? But you have to re- realize that the other people around us are still part of this world and have not been snatched out of this, of this world. They are not, they have not been made, you know, they have not been saved yet. They have not been changed yet okay so when he asks us to pray you never know your enemy might be your brother or sister in christ within a few years just because they're not saved then or they haven't seen it they might be a few years down the road you will see them in church on their hands and knees and they might come to you and ask for forgiveness you never know who god's children are just because they're not that child his child yet you weren't your you weren't his child when you were first born because he hadn't snatched you out of the world. When he finally snatched you out of the world and you became his child, we like okay, we're in that glory period where we think, Oh, everything's wonderful and we're holy and everything and we have a tendency to get back in our flesh and not realize the struggle it took us to get to become his child. Exactly. And so we need to have that same that same patience with others and not only that, but it's it's like he said, um, remember when Jesus was on the cross? And they were, and the Pharisees were taunting him, right? Right. What did he say? Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. How can you, how can you be upset with somebody who's blind? Ah. He opens our eyes. He says, I, you know, at last I see. He opens our eyes. Like he did at the guy with the pool at Siloam. He put the mud on his eyes and he went in there. He splashed the water and he could see. That's a that's a, a metaphor for spiritual awakening. We can see they can't; they're blind. So he wants us to be able to forgive and everything, and hold and 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 have that heart of forgiveness. Have the heart and the mind of Christ, because that person, you know, saying could be your brother and sister in Christ one day. You know, what I'm saying I talked to Pat about this one time um, before. It says especially um, uh, about um, racial type tension and stuff like that. There's not gonna be no black, white, Hispanic, you know, places in uh, heaven. We're all going to be one together in heaven. We're all going to be one. There's not going to be any separation. So you, if you think, you know, we have to get that stuff worked out now. Not only just that, but, you know, forgiveness, all that stuff like that. Because when we're in heaven, we're not going to have that. So you could have your, you know, your worst enemy get saved and be, you know, next to you and be serving the Lord. And if you have that, that bitterness in you, you know what I'm saying, and that hardness of heart, you know what I'm saying, to realize, you know, that well, that person doesn't deserve to get saved. Well, I didn't deserve to get saved. None of us do. We have to realize right. that. And not only that, but we have to, you know, realize that when we get to heaven, we're all going to be there in, you know, together with him as one. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be, well, I'll be separated off to this section and that person as long as they're all met. No, God's not going to allow that in, in, you know, that animosity and that hatred into his presence. We're all going to be one in love for him. And it's like we have to, you know, like I was, like I said before, he allows affliction to burn off the flesh. You know what I'm saying? Until we get to the spirit, he said, God will take all your dignity from you. Anything that we hold as a crush, as a sorry, not a crush, but a crutch. You know, anything that we hold as a crutch that you know, what I'm saying that keeps us from relying on him, he's going to take away. That's your pride, your dignity, everything. Remember, he wants us to end up with a humble spirit. Right. And, and humble spirit right. is something that is dependent on him. 
You know what I'm saying? Pride can show its way, show itself in many forms. You know what I'm saying? Even in ways we don't see it. And you know what I'm saying? You gotta remember what the first sin was. Think about Satan. What was his saying? I will, I will, I will. I will exalt myself. I will do. That's what's gotta be burned away. That's what's gotta be burned away. And he's, and he's like, you know, when we're going through the fire of affliction, that's what's being burned away. Think about Job. You know what I'm saying? He didn't even, and he hadn't even sinned. We, and, you know, no one none of us are like Job. You know what I'm saying? Because he hadn't even sinned and he was going, but the whole point is he was getting all that, 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 that fleshiness burned off of him where we question, you know, we have, all have to get to a point where it's, you know what, Lord, I don't know why I'm going through this. I don't know what, it, but you know what, if you're allowing it. And ultimately, he has to allow everything that happens to us. I mean, if you're allowing it, then there's there's something in there that you're trying to burn off of me. So, Father, I surrender and I I, I, I surrender to you not only your will, but whatever you're trying to burn off of me. And yeah. like I said, that fire of affliction burns the flesh off of us. You know what I'm saying? To to so till we have to be in the spirit. You can either fight it or you can just allow it to burn the the the, the, the flesh off of you until you're in that point of surrender. Woo! I'm done, Pat. Woo! Woo! That was a sermon, girl. That was so anointed, Mary, on it made me cry. I knew God said, record this one. I knew it. Wow, that was anointed, girlfriend. Yes. That was rich. That's something I was trying to, exactly what she just said is exactly what I was trying to tell someone else, is that remember remember where you came from. You was once where, the, where I was. Yeah. Like, like some people, that when they get saved, they get they tend to get judgmental on other people. They start looking at other people like, oh, I see what they're doing wrong. I see, I can, yeah, because it's, that veil has been lifted off your eyes, so now you can see things clearer than they can. Right. And they're blind. So you have to that same that same patience that God had with you or have with you, you have to have that on other people too. 